what does this optic team need to do to keep the form that they showed at that major um because obviously we've seen in the past in every game that like teams can have good performances on land and, and have a really good land tournament and make a run like that but sometimes it just doesn't translate beyond that um with lag's win last year um and and a couple other scenarios like how does optic lock it in and make sure that like they use this to carry that momentum throughout the rest of the year into champs and, and throughout these qualifier weeks I think they need to get better at control. Um, I think their hotel was like the only map that they were decent at. Um, and then they ended up like whenever they had to like play fortress, they were like losing it in the most brain dead or like dramatic fashions. And luckily that's not in the maps anymore. So I think if they want to like keep this run, obviously they're good at hard point. Like they're good at their three maps. They got their embassy. They got their fortress, which they're going to, that's going to get auto vetoed. So they're going to be starting up. They're going to play hotel and embassy damn near every series unless, or hydro, which they're not terrible at. They got slammed by, by, by uh, Toronto, but they're not terrible at it. Um, I think they are, they're good at hard point S and D they've been pretty up and down, but their control has been fucking mid as fuck. And I feel like a lot of the time they've been playing that fortress. Now they're getting, what what is this map called? Himla Expo, His, Him, Himalayas I don't Expo. Know how to say that. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Akuna Matata Expo. The snow um, map. They're pretty they're pretty hyped on that map. They said uh, that apparently they said that's their playground. So um, if they can get another good control under their belt, like they're in a good spot because I feel like that was the one game mode that was like I don't know if they could win it, and now they, they they're starting to look better on a lot of other maps. So I think I think that's gonna be the key for them moving forward, in my opinion. <clears throat> yeah um i i think i think they'll keep that form um regardless of whether they like himalaya blah, 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 expo or not um i i think they're just on a, on a roll right now they're they're all firing on all cylinders um i still and i know we talked about this in, in, a, in a few a past episode is is this this ghosty situation maybe even hook situation is still so interesting for me and how it's going to play in as we get closer to champs, right? Like I think at the end of the day, it won't really affect these players as much, but it does kind of bring to the, again, the question, like even if Chris, I'm curious what you think, even if optic win it all, right? Let's say they, they win champs. Do you think that this team sticks together? Like if you know, if you know for a fact, Fred and Sib want to come, you can get them for free. Even if Optic wins champs, do you think they keep that roster? You want know, it's crazy, bro? I feel like there's no shot. I dude. don't if let's say if they were to win it all. Yeah, just even win champs. Even if yeah. they were placed like top two, top three for whatever reason. Um, which I think they can. I think I wouldn't mind them going after Pred still, just because that guy is an abomination. <laughs> but at the same time, I think it would be a mistake unless Dan is getting mega turned on to drop Dan. And I just think like some people wait, like, to, wait, wait, uh, even if puke plays better than Dan, you still think they should just drop puke and not Dan reason being for me is a lot of people like to say, you know, IGL stuff's like overrated, underrated, whatever. But I think, especially if they go after Pred, Pred is coming from a system where he's almost basically like, playing with somebody that is very selfless and is letting him kind of do whatever he wants and just like doing the, the, the bitch role, bro. Like Lamar is essentially doing the bitch role. Like it's a fact. He always tell you be, he's, he's got the ultimate green light in a system with dashy and Shotzi and even Sib. Sometimes I don't know who's going to take that back seat um, for somebody like Pred. And I'm not saying that Pred or somebody else can't make that adjustment, it just, I feel like Dan already basically does it for this team. And I feel like he's a big reason why their hard point has been better. Prior to Dan being on this roster, their hard point was super inconsistent. I think the only thing they were pretty good at was a couple of S and D maps before they brought in Dan. And now their hard point's really good. So although that could be a product of other things, I feel like Dan has directly impacted that with his communication and even some of his in-game leadership. I think before Shotzi took those reins and for doing doing that as a sub player is like in, insanely difficult um, to do. Um, and I think them getting rid of Dan 
if the results continue to be good, unless he's getting absolutely twerked on, would be a mistake. Going after Pred, I wouldn't be mad at, um, even if Hook is playing pretty good, uh, just because Pred is such a commodity. And you also got to take into effect take into the uh, take into effect that if they don't get Preds, that means somebody else is getting Pred. You're basically making the competition bit better. Um, by giving up the opportunity to take this guy, which I'm sure he already wants to come to this team. So I don't know, bro. It's tough. Um, unlike I said, though, unless Dan's getting absolutely slammed, I think it would be stupid to drop Dan. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm personally dropping them both. Um, I'm, I'm building this God squad no matter what. I feel like I know people like to say like, oh, there's always, there's not enough kills on the map, but I, I feel like a group of Pred, Sib, shotzy dashy like especially in you know i assume they'll they'll get another coach to and maybe a coach that fits more their style i think the problem with ray ray's a great coach he just doesn't fit the style of play that like shotzy and dashy and maybe even pred and sib would want to play at so <clears throat> i think they'd get a coach and i don't know i think these guys would figure it out I don't, I don't think the igl hurdle would be that much of an issue um and they would just be so insane they'd be the most talented team in the league by by a which is crazy the fact that phases a team, but I, yeah, they would be the most talented league in the or team in the league by far. Um, yeah, potentially. Yeah, I, I would drop them. I would drop them both regardless. I, I, but I do going back to Dan. I do think you know that kid's going to end up on a probably a decent team because I think he's shown he's more than a role player. Um, the only issue was, I mean, maybe even Seattle, right, would be a landing spot for him. Maybe uh, that could be somewhere he would go. But um, but yeah, I just think you know. There's no way that you could pass up on either of those two guys, um, especially because, you know, they like playing with each other, right? Like they might, they might, we've seen this before in the past where teams are like, oh, like I want to play with so-and-so, like we're a package deal, like to try and just finesse getting both to go. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think Ghost will be fine regardless, but I, I, no, really yeah, I mean, I think, I think he'll be fine too, but I don't know. I, I disagree with it. Um, just cause like, I think I value the IGL stuff more here just because I feel like it made such a direct impact with their team already. And well, then yeah, you're also had Huke. Well, no, but here's the thing. You're also picking up another player that essentially is so used to that environment. Like Pred has history in like challengers in Australia and stuff like that. But his direct transition into the league was immediately playing with somebody like Lamar. That's just selfless, like guy guidance type of person just lets you do whatever the fuck you want and shine. Um, not to say Pred can't go without it. It's just transition should be like this easy with like keeping Dan. Like I said, who knows, man? Honestly, if they do well, though, I'm not looking forward to knowing what that conversation is like <laughs> at all. Because it's going to lead to heartbreak for, for somebody. That's going to be I a tough like. one, yeah. Pat, Pat yeah. Are, you, um, are you quitting X Defiant to go coach that roster? Three mil over three is is the is the amount. That's if, the if flat Hector line gives me price. A call, yeah, if Hector gives me a call and can can get that, then yeah. You wouldn't Bro, come. If, you if, wouldn't come down for for possibly the, the the most iconic new roster in Call of Duty history. No, I still know my worth. James. Okay. I still know my worth. Okay. Staying strong it, yeah. at three mil. All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I respect it. I respect it. I do think the I might, whole. I might do him a favor and do a one mil over one. You know, just to to prove that just I can make a little the same ratio. Happen. But yeah. but that but it's it didn't less change. Of a, it's, yeah, yeah, but it's less of an obligation. It's less like of a commitment. Yeah, yeah. It's one year yeah. instead of three. And yeah, then but it, then but then here's the thing though. Like, what if you like right? They give you a mil, you they give you a mil, and then you're just the greatest coach of all time. Then, and then I'm coming the next, back. I'm asking for ten re, over yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> why would they do that, man? Listen, you're just it's trying a to gamble on both sides. Well, I mean, yeah, horrible. they could, could they be the could, worst coach ever. Yeah, so you know what you yeah. know what you're doing, Pat. But honestly, yo, if they had coaches in game, I would coach that, that shit so yeah, fast. Be a, I would be just in there. I think that's the problem with coaching in general. You can't have coaches in game right now. Like that's. That's that's what leads to the coach that, that that whole argument we had a few episodes ago when we were like, are coaches yeah. even worth it? Like that is literally Wait, why it's coaching. It's really like a glorified analyst. It's not really co a coach. Yeah, yeah. Coaching in this in this game, all like you know, I said like there's a lot of fluky shit that happens in hard point. A lot of that fluky shit would just be yeah, would like not up. gone, but it would clean up so well. Like I would literally just be looking at the kill feed. I'm like. Oh, this is a, this isn't a clean four. Like one of them's gonna spawn like here and be like, yeah. oh, remember man. remember that situation of Shotzi when he chowed on that fortress? Like if there was a coach in the game, like that's not happening. Like I'm telling no shot, everybody bro. to fucking L trigger and not move. Take it with Hugh rotating it like 55. Like situations like that, bro. Like they just don't happen. All those blunders when you have a coach in your ear, like kind of directing things and calling shit out, that just wouldn't happen. So 100 yeah. percent 